Hello, hello. What is going on, everybody? My name is Ian Robinson, and I'm the lead ZBrush trainer and training manager here at Maxon. And we are back with another live stream, but the final live stream of 2023. So real quick, I'm just going to be uh, signing in on uh, Pretzel's account because I like to have music while we do it, and I got signed out. So hopefully everyone's doing well. What is going on, Ryan? How's it happening? Hopefully everyone is doing well and that the everyone is enjoying their holidays. Quick. Get this started. All right, all right. And today you might be seeing a really interesting character up on my screen moments. And if you have at all played God of War, um, you might recognize one of those characters, at least the look and feel of it. Um, one of these fun little undead legionnaire type characters. So, oh, right. So actually, for whatever reason, I can't log into that. So there's just no real music today, which is totally fine. Let's get it. So, of course, you guys can always ask questions. What's up, TL101? How's it going? You guys can always ask questions. Please feel free if you have any questions about Zebra specifically, uh, let me know. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. Where's my glove? Boom, 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 boom. I have my ZBrush glove. Beautiful. Doing good? Awesome, awesome. So yeah, we're just going to be having some fun making some art and doing some. So, right. So, this is where we are currently. So, doing a pretty uh, simple block out at the moment, but I always have some reference off under the side. Going to definitely need some uh, weaponry for this. Um, so, we're going to definitely get into some stuff. Uh, best tips for hard surface modeling, says uh, Ali Sheena. Hell, oh, great question. So, actually, uh, in ZBrush, hard surface is actually, depending on what you're trying to create, your best tools are going to be your gizmo and the modeler. So, and we're going to be doing some hard surface stuff today because I have like some really good stuff. But one of the things that I'd like to call out as like best tips is actually understanding the relationship between the gizmo and the Z modeler. So if I were to just quickly grab, just say something like the cylinder and we'll just focus on the cylinder for a second. One of the really cool things is just understanding that there's edge loop duplication with the gizmo and you could support this. So... ZBrush is all about feature stacking. So, you know, like here I'm deleting all these edge loops, right? A quick tip for this would be to come in here, geometry, edge loop, and delete loops which is down here at the bottom. That deletes all the loops that are non-supporting. But then, like, let's say we wanted to make, like, a quick bowl or something like that. Or actually, let's go ahead and start making a shield because I need to make a shield for him. So here, one of the things that's really cool is you know that you can control, drag, and let go and have a secondary shape or what you could do is control drag let go of control and drag up and have repeating spacing of that well you could do the exact same thing with edge loops so i can mask off this edge loop control drag and i can actually drag out different edge loops on itself now notice i have like a closed shape so there's thickness to it and again i'm just dragging this out so with hard surface like going back to that bowl or like a vase real quick, for example, I can scale this up. I can control drag and flail this out, control drag, scale this back in, control drag. So in hard surface, I'm actually really able to come in and just define a couple shapes and really block something out quick, fast, and in a hurry and get more like a vase like this, right, to get that nice so I'll be making a shield and some stuff today, but that's a, that's something that I really lean into, and then I support it with Z Modeler. So let's actually get into making said shield. Hey, what's up, Leonard? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. So here I'm actually going to get a basic kind of Athens style shield, which is round, and of course, to reference is your best friend. Always lean into reference. So I have some reference over here from the various video games that was uh, in God of War. So here I'll just show you. I'm just using Google real quick. And so one of the things to notice is like, again, we have this very simple kind of uh, um, rounded shape with some filigree. 
on the shield. So nice basic shapes. We're not going to get into a lot of detail until we need to. Same thing with the helmet. So really just in the, in the sword themselves, really just finding those nice basic shapes. So here we're just seeing that there's just a little bit of variation in that. So, um, so for something like this, actually, I'd actually here. Let's actually get some clean topology. So let me show you another technique called uh, mesh fusion. Mesh fusion is really, really fun, and I I use it a lot. So we're going to go to polygroups, and we're going to go group by normals. It will give us different polygroups. And what I really want is to have nice, clean topology here. So before I go through all this of like reshaping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a brush, which shout out to Henry Shavanka for this brush, because he actually uh, probably one of my favorite third-party brushes. And I could share a link here in a little bit with that. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out this nice shape, say something like this. Control drag in space and control drag again. And that's going to rebuild this topology for us. And this is going to be really nice because then what I can do is I can just make this as a polygroup and I have nice clean topology on this side. Now I'm not worried about the actual uh, backing of this. I'm going to go ahead and just work on this plain shape just like such. So I'm going to go ahead and go modify topology and hit in. What I want to do is going to I'm going to go ahead and demodeler to get a specific mask. Let's do. Should have actually just I could do. Now I'm going to do. <laughs> mind changing my mind every five seconds. I'm going to actually shrink this down just a little bit. So control S. I'm going to make this a mask. Soften this up, and I'm going to start pulling this out a little bit. Give me what something just like this. Let's do symmetry and do a relax smooth. I just wanted to have a little bit of a bow on there, so it's nice and nice and shaped a little bit. And I can actually back just a little. Bit. Yeah, that looks nice. It's just a nice soft round shape to it. Mister White, what's happening? Feels a little quiet to me. I'm gonna hold on. I'm sorry, one second, guys. It feels a little quiet. In pretzel rocks. Um, I, I love having music. It's just something that I like, absolutely love and have to have. So let me see real quick if I can get this, get this logged in. Fast. I apologize. Hey, what's up, B? How's it going? Da -da -da. Probably just typed it in. How's everyone doing? Working on Alex, decided what I'm going to eat. Nice. Yeah, that's always fun. Surchan, what's happening? Doing good. So we are actually, yeah, we are actually prepping. Uh, we're actually... You've played God of War, the original. Um, there is a character that um, there's a character called the Undead Legionnaire, uh, the Greek soldiers, and yeah, it's actually quite fun because um, these things are just like you know just causing Kratos to have like a ton of problems. And I was playing the newest uh, Valhalla. It's just not letting me log in. That sucks. Um, playing the newest Valhalla DLC, and man, I just loved it. So yeah, it was super. Okay, now let's just come over here and let's do mesh. Let me give it a little bit of thickness. Now what I'm going to do here is there's a little bit of a lip on the shield, so I'm going to come in here, press Tap Alt, get like this little bit. I'm gonna cover over this edge, get a new poly group, different here. I'm going to just tap this a couple times. This will just give me this nice little lip around there. And actually, that's a little bit too much. Let's do that. Let's do that out. Now, yeah, that's a bit like a nice little lip. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this above his head. I like to keep my my assets or props. Hey, my mic died. That's fun. Welcome back. <laughs> yep, there we go. Audio died, of course. I really like the anatomy of the Legionnaire, the ribcage, though. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, we're still working on it, cleaning it up. The OG God of War games are so good. Yes. Well, if you haven't played the, the if you haven't played um, Valhalla, um, I'm not going to spoil it in any way, shape, or form, but I will recommend such a fun game. So definitely check that out. Okay. So let's get some straps and stuff on here real quick. And I think what I want to do with the straps, we'll just keep it really simple. So I'm just going to use a plain 3D. Dirt. Actually, let's put this in a folder and call this shield. Again, we're not going for any, uh, we're not going for any uh, major. Shield. Perfect. Go and enter a plane 3D. All right, and we're going to reconstruct this a few times. So we're going for a strap. So I'm just going to reconstruct this. Um, that's too much. And actually what I want to do <clears throat> is actually take this one and this one and just this. Space, delete, all polygroups. This is what we want. Bring this up and I'm going to rotate this around so he's on the back side. Turn it 180. Up a little bit. This. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to mask off this section and invert. I'm just going to pull this out. Then it'll have a little bit of, of rounding to it. And let's actually insert a couple edge loops. And we'll do right in the middle of here and here. So this is where we had actually put like the hole or the actual rivet that would be holding this. And then I'm going to want this to kind of bow a little bit. So I'm going to come here with interactive elevation and give it a little bit of topology. I'm going to tap and keep that right about there. This gives me this little bit of fall off. And this can be adjusted at any point in time. Kind of just that looking something like that. Now, there's zero thickness to that, but that's okay. That'll be fine. And if we don't like how skinny that is, of course, we can always, right, we can always make it wider. But we can also do a thing. So here's another, like, tip for hard surface that we can actually hover over this edge. And we can control the fall off of the final edge without creasing it. We can actually come in here and we can put another edge loop close to that as possible. Now this is off center. So I'm actually going to use a new feature, dynamic symmetry, which when I have this turned on, the dynamic function before local symmetry would just let it be symmetrical on only one axis off center. But here, if I ever need to rotate this in any way, shape or form, like if I needed to do this, that, or this, I would still have symmetry with all those axes. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and Turn that on and support the edges like this. So this will be nice. So when I go ahead and do dynamic sim, it doesn't shrink as much and it allows for that uh, for that fall off to be a little bit more controlled. And then we can actually go to dynamic sim uh, subdivide and apply some thickness. And this is also something I definitely implore that you do when you're doing any type of hard surface work. Um, even if it's organic or not, like the thickness itself can be controlled. And it's only set in stone when you actually set it in stone, right? When you actually hit apply. If I turn off dynamic, it's still single-sided geometry. When I hit D for dynamic, it turns back on and it keeps that thickness. And then I can just turn off local sim for a second, mirror and weld. Here we have it equal on both sides. We are good to go. I could have also done like an array mesh. Hey, what's up? I want that feature. Yeah, it's such a cool feature, uh, the R89. Super cool feature. It's in 2023. Uh, 2023 point, 
uh, I want to say point, what am I thinking point two? That might be right. But also in 2020, actually, I think that came out in the start of 20. A little bit of a blur, but it is 2023 current and 2020. Hey, what's happening? So now we have this and what's cool about the, the dynamic uh, symmetry is if my gizmo, gizmo is always there, like again, if I didn't mirror and weld this, then that's going to be there. In fact, I might even, might even be able to take the array mesh approach where I could do could have one outside as well and then everything's tied to that one and are good to go which is a way you could do it so either way whatever floats your boat you have a different approach it's really fun so we'll leave it like that for now and let's go ahead and save because saving is the name of the game leave you me you're still rocking 2022.0.8 that's okay cool i got a that, that mesh fusion feature is in there so that's one for sure that if you did not see that one, I'll show it again. It's really cool. But that's one that's also, that one's been there like 12 years. Crazy. Okay. Now let's go back to our reference real quick. So we have this kind of A shape here and then some filigree design on the inside. So to get that filigree design on the inside here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back on. And it's a little bit like a lip, which is fun. So I'm going to turn off dynamic subdivision. And I'm going to focus right here. And I'm actually going to bevel this. So I'm, you could do this in a couple ways, right? You can actually come here and say, you know what? I'm going to shrink this by hitting Control, Shift, and X. Or S, rather. Sorry, S for shrink. X expands. S shrinks. So I could say, you know what? Make this a different poly group at this point. And then with these two here, I can go to Stroke. I'll go to Curve Modifiers and say Poly Groups. And I could frame this. Then I could take like, let's say our curve alpha. And with this curve alpha, um, we can actually go up here to stroke, go up to our um, no repel, no fall off. And let's go to our modifier and turn off the size so that it remains the same. And let's pick something kind of squarish. So let's say alpha, alpha to, if I just tap right there, then it's gonna give me this kind of effect. And I can control this by my actual size of my uh, draw size. So I could say, you know what, something like that. A little bit better, and then boom, I have that, and it's a separate mesh, which is nice. So I can sit here and control this. Now, you might see a little bit of a lip here, and that is because I had symmetry turned on. So if I back this up, just the frame mesh, and I turn off symmetry, now that's just one instead of that two then it gives me a better representation of that shape. So that's a little bit better. There we go. That's what I want. So that's giving me something that looks a lot nicer. Uh, do you do, do frame mesh? You know what? It, you know, I think you're right. Let me go back. Let me see. Yep, number seven is frame mesh. Yep. <laughs> I, n I obviously never use that. Oh yeah, I'll show I'll show uh, uh, fusion, uh, fesh, uh, <laughs> mesh fusion. <laughs> That's a tongue twister for me. So yeah, I'll show it right now. Uh, hello, uh, icy film. How you doing? Uh, my day is doing doing really well. How's your day doing? Okay, great. Yeah, mesh fusion. So I showed it at the beginning, but I'll show it again just because it was fun. Um, I personally like it, so I will preach it to the choir. So here, I'm gonna call the straps. Uh, perfect. Save real fast. So if we pull up the cylinder right here and we go make poly mesh 3D, we have these poly groups, right? And what we want to do actually is we want to go to poly groups and go group by normal. This works really, really well on flat surfaces. The idea here is that you could take a secondary piece of uh, material or mesh. So like I'll, I demonstrate it with a flat mesh. I'll show you one other thing. We're going to pick up the um, IMM primitives half. And we'll go with this sphere right here, sphere 32. I'll drag this out so it's like this. And then all you do is control, drag, just like you would Dynamesh, do it again. And that look at that, it fuses that together. So now this is actually 
attached to this. If I were to pick this up, now it's attached to this shape. And so this is a great way to get rid of end gons and also make new custom shapes really quickly. So what I could do, if I wanted to get rid of end gons, right, um, there is a brush, and I will get the brush. It's actually by Henry Shervanka. So I'll actually get the link for you because it's free. Um, but that's uh, actually here. Other brushes, right? This is Mesh Retapo. And because I know this is 32 segments, this is 32 uh, edge loops, I'll hit M and I'll pick 32, drag this out. Same thing, I'll control drag and control drag again. That actually gets rid of that end gone and makes that planar topology. So, and you can make these yourself, but if you wanted to get it, let me actually pull that up. So let me grab this and go off here real fast and I'll actually get that. Shout out to Henry Shervanka. He was also, um, also at the ZBrush Summit, and he showcased a lot of cool stuff for hard surface. So if you're getting into hard surface for, for actual um, uh, hard surface for ZBrush, I definitely encourage. Here, primitives. So this is a completely free free brush so i could show you how to build it if you ever wanted me to but i thought this is actually faster and it supports an artist which is good yep absolutely and that is in your current version by the way <laughs> move topological brush doesn't uh doesn't work correctly yes we are aware of that uh thank you very much we are aware of that and we're actually working on fixing that so thank you for that um, yeah, we actually had a lot of people uh, talk to us about it. And so the team is aware and we're actively working to fix that as soon as possible. Okay. That would be very cool. Oh, so here, I shared the link in the chat, but just as visual reference, this is it. So, and if you hadn't seen Henry's work, definitely come on over and check it out because he does a lot of really cool stuff. And I'm not signed in at the moment, but work super amazing and you've probably seen this bugatti as uh as he gave uh, us rights at maxon to actually showcase it during our presentation for redshift and this is a redshift render too by the way so super cool and definitely fun to check about all right back to the show so we're going to make this shield of course so we already started doing this now something that is like an oldie but goodie feature is so this A here is not super complicated, right? But if I needed to actually look at this from behind, like this is this is an old feature, but I use it sometimes. If I wanted to actually see this a little bit more clearly, right? So I'm needing to see this. I can actually see my see-through lighter here. And pretty cool because then I can drag this over and I can now start to, quote, trace that shape if I wanted to. This is a super simple design, so I'm not gonna use that, but just wanted to point out that that does exist. So let's actually create that A shape. And I think the way I'm gonna go about doing it might seem a little unorthodox, but actually, you know what? Let me showcase, do this, do this. I'm gonna go through, I'm going to go to initialize and you keep this up, this. Drag this. Yeah, this is actually going to. So, just going out by A1. How do I want to? I want to start dragging this this way. And we'll say about. Point two now. That's fine. Crazy. Here, let's use modeler, and I'm going to just add in a own edge loop and control this. I think I should control it. Again, looking at that reference, not super crazy. Has some nice thickness to it. So what I want to do is actually see the thickness of this shape, the here. I want this to be as even as possible. So I'm actually going to hold up the um, a transpose line 
I'm first going to measure the, the width of this, which is 0.4 unit. Then I'm going to measure down here, spot, which is 0.6 unit. Okay, so I actually need to move this edge. So what I'll do is I'm going to go with slide, complete edge loop, this, bring this up. Here. That's about right. Okay, so this gets me a little bit, this gets me closer to what I want. 0.425. More. Here. Yeah, 0 0.408. That's perfect. So that just gives me an idea of that actual thickness. Now I can come in here and mesh this out. So I think I want to extrude this. See if it does. That doesn't do straight, so it doesn't matter. So let's just use Q mesh. Drag this out. Mask everything but this section. That out. There we go. Now I'm going to need this straight, which is super fun. So I'm actually going to go here, flip curve. And I'm just going to make that straight. So now that's coming off just the way that I want. Again, looking at that reference, then it flares up a little bit, which is totally fine. So now you can actually push this back, control, then add that adds a secondary shape, and then I can stop. That. Then we should just be able to, at this point, mirror and weld it. Here, modify topology, and mirror weld. And that will give me, that's a little bit gross. I broke it, so we need to fix that. Hey, Wynn, what's happening? Yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. Glad to help out. Uh, gonna take a break. Catch you later. Thanks, B. Hey, Big, was good? Oh, it's Hannibal. Dude, your name is like so blue that it's hard to read. What's up, Hannibal? How you doing? Alden, what's happening, dude? hey -o. 20 minutes late? Don't worry. Actually, just a heads up, I plan on streaming a little bit longer today than normal uh, because I was a little bit late, and also it's holiday, and I have a little bit of a cleaner plate. So I'm thinking about getting pretty far with this today. So just a uh, FYI. <laughs> okay, so want to do now let's do this so definitely want this to be pretty even again this comes to a point here so what i'm thinking about doing at this point, i think i need to this This is breaking. I don't want that to break there. So I think what I need to do is give this a little bit of I'm on solo at the moment, but let's turn the floor on. Let's see that. So that here. Weld this. Okay, that's a little bit better. Want to do go just a little bit past. Then I'm going to symmetry. That. Probably could have done this a couple different ways, but this is the way I'm choosing to do it. Okay with this? Fine. We can qu if we question whether or not it's welded, we could just hit weld points. Make sure that this is all one thing. Do that by going to polygroups, auto group. This is all one exact shape. So that's fine. This works. It's not getting animated, so I'm not really worried about the topology so much. Just want to make sure that it actually all pretty good. So we're going to give it some ELC here. 
this, that. And what we can also do if we wanted to is we could sit here and say, you know what, let's actually go to geometry and let's hit crease. And if we just crease things, hit A, or I'm sorry, hit D for dynamic subdivision, um, it actually is not smoothing much, which is perfectly good. So that's actually going to be good. And I'm actually going to divide up a few times, delete lower to give it even thicker topology. The reason why I want to do that is now I want to attach this field. So I'm going to set this up like this. Now I want this to mimic the arc of the shield itself. So we're going to come here, place this visually where we think it should be, mostly in the center. And looking at the reference, my A is a little too wide. So I'm actually going to stretch that up, something like this, get this close to it as possible. So I don't want, so you can see here we have this bend in the shield. Hey, what's going on, uh, Sheriff? So we're actually making a undead character. Uh, so God of War, uh, the undead, undead legionnaire, got a block out shape here. We're actually making some weaponry right now. Um, so I want this to actually follow the curvature of the shield. I don't want this to be great because that's not realistic not how, what you would normally see. So we're gonna get this relatively close to what we want. And we're gonna use matchmaker, where are we? Matchmaker here. And I'm going to just the focal shift and I'm going to drag that down. And you can see here, we get this nice arc. Before we had it like this, now it's looking like that. So I want this in the center. This. Down, gonna follow that shape. Also, skinny this up. Maybe let's. Don't need RGB. Yeah, that bends a little bit better. Add that. Now that's following the curvature a lot better, and that looks to be a little bit more natural. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it's a shield now. Uh, is the rebuilding topology feature that you showed minutes ago only in 2024? Nope, absolutely not. That's been around the Fesh. Uh, that's a tongue twister for me. Fesh has been around for, I want to say, the last 12 years. And you can definitely do it in um, the 2022 version as well. The trick to it is make sure that the poly groups are active. If you have only one poly group on your mesh, then it's not going to work because it needs poly groups to figure out where the stitching needs to be. So it's a really cool feature, but you need to make sure that you have different poly groups. So your first step should be with with whatever mesh you're working on, either group by normals on your poly groups or um, select a section and change its poly group. So then you have more than one poly group. Hey, teacher may ask a question. When I append a new subtool, as I remembered, it usually activated right away or right immediately so I can move right away. But days it doesn't seem to activate when you append. Oh, okay. Okay. Great question. So there's a difference between insert and append. So let me save real quick. Boop. So if I want a new piece of my shield or I want to add a new thing, right, then what we need to do is figure out A, how to get the mesh in, and B, what method we want to do. So when I hit insert, and I say insert a cone, it's going to drop that down below the selected subtool, and it's going to activate it. So now I can manipulate this cone. There's the cone, right? And again, like I said, if I were to be underneath the straps and say insert, it adds it it absolutely underneath the selected subtool. So whatever subtool you're on and you insert, it's going to activate that selected that new subtool you inserted, and it's going to drop it just below the active subtool that you have. Now append works differently. If I'm all the way at the top and I have this little circle thing do had right, and I'm just going to close these menus down so you can see, and I'm going to open this up just a bit. You can see here I have my folders and I have at least you know, I have 21 different subtools. Then if I hit append and say, I want to append that gear 3D, it's going to drop it all the way at the bottom and it will not select it. 
actually going to be, uh, it's going to leave that as default. And the reason for that is you might be working on something like the shield and you're like, oh, I'm going to need to add in another asset. So you append it, but you don't want to select it right away because you're still doing one other thing. Or you're bringing in something from another scene, i.e. like you built a character. And now you bring you need to bring that character into the scene, but you don't actually need to work on that character. Then you could just append that character into your scene, add it, but it will not select it. So that's the two differences. Um, it's just a mindset at that point. Why would you append it versus inserting? In my mind, I always insert. I rarely append because I'm inserting to work on that piece immediately. I need to add a new piece, therefore I'm going to insert. But there are cases, like I said, where you're working on something and you need to just add it to the scene, but you may not necessarily need to actually. So that's the major difference between append and insert. That's a fantastic question, by the way. Just tried in 2024. Did not quite work. I joined the stream late. Uh, is it enabled by default? Um, here, let me let me uh, let me show you real quick too. I don't mind going over it actually. So, um, go up here, make poly mesh 3D. Say something like this cylinder, and then go to poly groups and group by normals, and then try it with this this brush here, the IMM half, the IMM primitive half. So B for brush, I, H. And then grab like a sphere 32, drag that out, and then press and hold control drag, press and hold control drag again, but make sure there's no subdivisions and make sure you're not on Dynamesh because that works differently. Um, sometimes you could turn off smooth and that will just provide you with a little bit different of an algorithm. It should work in 2022 because I've done it. <laughs> so. Thanks, thanks, Dalton. Yeah. Uh, do we need to update all groups geo individually for Dynamesh to work? All the on all Dynamesh groups gone in Dynamesh. Um, it sounds very no, no, no. Uh, your question. Um, so when you're doing Dynamesh, if I understand the question correctly, if you have groups on, i.e., you have two, you have something like this, right? And you want to make the you want to Dynamesh. So with I'm just gonna go group auto. So we have two different objects with two different uh, poly groups. With Dynamesh, Dynamesh with groups turned on, what it's gonna do is keep that mesh separate from each other. So currently with Dynamesh, if I were to just Dynamesh this, it will weld that together. And now it's welded and it's it still keeps the poly groups, right? But if I turn groups on and Dynamesh, which what it just did was it separated it. It actually closed this hole and it kept this separate. And the reason why you may want to do that is maybe you are actually working on a like a human figure and you're using Dynamesh, but you don't want the arms to be welded to the body, as an example, um, which is actually how I do most of my blockouts. Like he's Dynamesh together now completely, but before I kept his arms and stuff like that separate. So that, that would be one way to do that. And then once you turn that off, to so go back to geometry, Turn that off and then redo that. Now it's going to weld that together and such. So if you do have, so this is actually what's what's cool about this is let's say in previous versions I wanted to actually create um, kind of a, a you know like a, a weird shape here, right? So maybe what I'll do is just with masking I'll say you know what I'm actually going to angle this like that, sharpen that, create a new poly group by hitting Control W, turning on groups and redynameshing automatically separate that piece and that's one way of workflow you don't need to go that approach so much anymore if you're in 2024 because now we have knife curve right but now what we could do is we can actually keep that piece so i can actually slice and keep it where before the knife curve doesn't have that if i were to just make a cut like this it would just cut it and delete it and then rebuild that surface now in 2024 we can actually keep that piece. So I can press and hold control and shift and press the space bar, get split parts, and I can now start cutting and keeping these different shapes. Really a lot of fun. So now I can have shapes like this, and then obviously I can manipulate different aspects like, okay. And this is a new way to think about hard surface where I like I bring this piece in, that gets 
done like that. I have this piece, right? So then I'll come through and say, you know what? This actually gets gets stepped, banded on, because I was able to cut that that end. Now, when what we do with this is that, and you might have noticed that it's kind of like still grabbing other pieces. When I make this cut, it's still keeping the it's still creating another poly group. So what we could do is just make sure we go auto group and we have individual pieces. So now I could say this is the shape I want to minute. Maybe I want to this in and expand that. Build this surface. So these are just new fun ways to think about it. But that's how Dynamesh works and then that's a new feature. So then I could just rebuild that, keep that there, or I could say groups turned on and separate that back out from each other. Oh yeah, it works. I thought it was two meshes I need to be like or something. Yeah, absolutely not a problem, sculpt. It's only working on the groups which I made changes for the rest that wasn't updating. Oh, interesting. Well what version of ZBrush are you in? All right, well, oh, you're in 23? So, need you. Okay. Interesting, hold on. I'm trying to make sure I understand the question correctly too, so. Auto group. Quick. I'm just going to split real fast. Get a couple shapes. Um. Question for you. Might be something that you may just have to like. You you may you may want to um because I'm not sure if I understand either. So sometimes it'd be good to like maybe throw in a support ticket if you're not sure. Um. Because I, I may not be understanding correctly, so I apologize for that. There is a different algorithm too with this little button or this little dot that is turned off. It should be like if you're making a change, sculpting here, and then you're rebuilding this with groups turned on. Um, it should be only it should be updating. You know, should be dynameshing everything as normal. So, but you wouldn't really see any major changes. But if you're saying that you I understand, right? You made a change, and then hold on. Let me reread the question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, do we need to update all groups? The answer is no. I don't think so. And all dynamic. I might not just be understanding the question correctly, so I apologize for that. If you have a visual representation of what that looks like, I would say like. Put in a support ticket or like show i'm a visual person and so it's helpful for me um but also too we have a few discords that you can want to join if you're on discord um and you can you can ask uh that could be a way for get some help as well i do, I do apologize i just don't think i'm understanding correctly and i just blame <laughs> Uh, do I often sculpt from spheres or a base mesh? That's a great question. So I often sculpt from a sphere, um, but I create my own base meshes. So, so it depends on the project, right? I'm actually more in the mindset of every year I create a new base mesh and I work off that base mesh for a little bit, but that base mesh starts from a sphere. So I typically will come through um, if I want to work on things fast and work on base meshes that I've done. It also helps preserve my style and it also helps preserve uh, my knowledge of anatomy and gets me into the project quickly. Because even if you start from a base mesh, my, my philosophy, my belief system is using a base mesh that was made by somebody else. If you're still learning and having a hard time of understanding anatomy, then you're, it's only doing yourself a disservice because you may not understand why the proportion, shapes, and volumes matter. And so you might accidentally break rules that you're unaware of. So in my set, I actually build my own base mesh 
unless I'm on a job where somebody's like, here's a provided base mesh. But usually most of my projects start from a sphere and then and then like I said, I make my own base meshes. And then if I want to do something quick, I'll make it from there. It really is up to you, the artist, on the approach you want to take. But ultimately I encourage build your own base meshes, work off of that if you want to do speed stuff. Um, but there's nothing wrong with starting with with uh, from a sphere and there's nothing wrong with starting from a base mesh. At the end of the day, we're all just trying to create something cool and awesome and share it with the world, right? You have three groups, make changes to one and see if all uh, groups update. Okay, so Dynamesh, it should all update. It should, you, you might should, you should get all a smooth, a smooth um, feature. Let's start with something new. So if I'll just insert, um, let me just insert a brand new piece of geo real quick. So Dynamesh just affects the whole mesh overall, which is why Sculptress is so cool. So in this case, yeah, if I were to break groups, split this into three separate pieces, turn on my wireframe so you can see. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm going to go polygroups, all groups. So then you could see one, two, and three, right? And so ideally here, if I make change to one, Boom, and Dynamesh with groups turned on. I got Blur turned on. So Blur turned on, what this is going to do is this is going to smooth everything. If I hit Dynamesh, now everything gets affected. Now if I sculpt only one aspect of this, and I hit Dynamesh again, everything is still going to be affected, but you're not going to see any major changes. Okay, yeah, cool. So, um, everything's going to be slightly altered but not a ton you shouldn't notice a big difference you shouldn't be seeing <clears throat> a random change on this occurring than this the only time that would happen is if you drop resolution right drop resolution oh one gets affected well that's not right <laughs> I don't think that's right. Everything should be. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna inquire about this. I'm gonna inquire because I now need to know. Um, perfect, thank you for bringing that up. I will definitely check into it. <laughs> it would be super cool to have a f uh, folder feature I was in the sub tool popping window. That's ah, a cool idea. I like I like that idea. Hey, what's up, Carbon four 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 four? How you doing, buddy? Cool. That was fun. All right. Well, we're gonna move on forward. <laughs> but no, seriously. Thanks for bringing that up. I will. I will have a gander at that. All right. So now let's continue um, our shield. Real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the trap, and we're going to add just some quick rivets real fast. Now ZBrush has some fun rivets that are just built inside. You never really need to create everything 100% from scratch. You don't want to. I'm a philosophy of if it ships with ZBrush, it's cool to use. If you want to build your own rivets, that's also really, really cool. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to real fast just come in here and quickly separate this. Now I have a ray mesh turned on What's happening. And I'm actually going to turn this off and I'm going to I'm gonna do a lot easier. This is an easier method. I'm gonna go mirror and weld. There, that'll be fine. Because now what I can do, have symmetry turned on, grab this rivet here, right? I can place this in. This. That should be fine. Then I'm going to isolate these. I like to keep things separate, so I'm going to go split, split, hidden. Cool about this now is I'm going to go to I'm going to go to V2. The reason why is because I just want to see the straps and the strap points here. The reason for that is now I want to go off this side. And lift this up a little. Get a little bit of lift. Yep, 
That sounds good. Also wanting to get rid of, I'm having some weird creasing happening. So I want to uncrease all, get rid of that. Go. Make a little bit of a menu. Then we'll go back to V1, which will create, okay, it's just everything. So now if I ever need to go back to V2, I could see just those two. You work with a lot of sub tools sometimes. You and me both, Chris. Yeah. Sometimes I'd say like, I'm probably, I'd average somewhere between 80 to 120 sub tools per project. But I tend to try to consolidate as much as possible. Okay, great. Now we got this looking pretty nice. I like this the way it is. Um, we could do one more thing, which we could actually do. So if we go back to the shield design, looks like there's a little, this is probably paint at this point, right? But this could also be a raised edge. Circle around that A. So it really could be up to us what we want to do with that. Um, for now, I'm going to call it paint and leave the shield as such. But what I will do, is I'm going to come through and give it a little bit of color. Something that I like to do. I like to see what it looks like. Sort of a darker reddish. Fill that with something like this. Here, I'll fill this. Something like that. Now this gold is way too much. Not at all. So let's actually just Yeah, that's a little bit that looks a little bit. I'll actually do that with this helmet. I'm not super satisfied with this helmet yet, but that's okay. I never really stay super grounded with my blockouts. I just kind of come through and find something that I think is pretty nice. So everything that you see right now is subject to change. It's just there to kind of hold the look and feel of it. So I say that's pretty good. The, uh, no, one select last load is activated. Isolates a part of the tool. Control shift alt click on edge adds crease. Now, I've never experienced that, but I can inquire. Ah! What's up, dude? What's up, buddy? Yeah, how about uh, polygroup ring and apply nano mesh pattern on shield? Absolutely, that's a way to go about doing it. See, now I have to decide, do I want that to be paint or do I want that to be geometry? Probably I'll settle towards geometry if because uh, I want this to be 3D printed. But for now, I think it'll be easier to just do paint. But we'll see. We'll see where I'm at with that. I want What I also want to do is I want to clean up uh, a little bit more of the anatomy, but I also want to get the... I want to get the sword made. Sword is pretty cool. So I want to do that next. Let's actually start on there. Then we'll start doing some refinement. Worried I wouldn't see you before the holidays. Hey, nobody. Heck no. I'm right here, man. We're going to have some fun today. All right. So let's actually go through. Let's actually make the sword now while we're discussing that stuff. So I'm just going to, here, real quick, I'm going to append. And this, and let's actually get sword blocked out here. So, this is my go to workflow. I usually go to edge loop and delete every time I add in a cylinder of sorts. Now, I'm going to try to build the handle real quickly based on the size of his current hand. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So, I can and link. Up. What I'm doing is just the idea of that, which that looks pretty good. Okay. Actually, now, give this a little bit of a 
a little bit of a roundness. Words. Words are hard to find. So let's come here. Let's hover over, get interactive elevation. I'm going to scale this up. Get something up. That. Also, two, something I learned from Forge and Fire, <laughs> if you ever watched that show. It's, if you're into weapon creation at all, um, that show is actually quite useful. Uh, handles are not truly round, because if they are, then they rotate in the hand, and that could be dangerous for the user. So you want to actually have this to be a little bit more squared off. So we want just a little bit of... Uh, we don't. We want a kind of a, a you know, off shape. I can't. Excuse me. <laughs> we don't want it to be truly round. Uh, we want it to be almost, you know, kind of, uh, kind of like warped a little bit. But you know, wear it off. Hopefully, you meant where I stood. And so <laughs> we're gonna go with something like this. And now let's go ahead and build the hilts. I'm gonna go to V3 for this, so then I don't have to be on solo anymore. And then let's actually come in here. Let's put in and call the sword. And then let's get the hilt. So I'm going to go grab it, bring in a cube. Well, let's go down to initialize cube. And we're going to go uh, on Z depth. We're going to go get something like this. And we're going to mirror and weld this so that we can symmetrically. And we have this. In the now we can focus on this. Oh yeah, I always like ideas. I always like new ideas. It's always it's always good to have. Thanks for for bridging it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, Chloe. What's up, Chloe? How you doing? Yep is absolutely all right so these have these little spiky points on them get a little bit of thickness you guys don't know chloe you got to say hi to chloe because they do live streaming on zebra live and they're also amazing art also check them out chloe when do you stream typically <laughs> no worries chris <laughs> Harsh, you're so funny. Yeah, everybody's here. doing good. You're doing good. That's good. As you see, going for a little bit of a nice little point effect here. So let's down here go. Actually, lift this up like such. I'm gonna take here. Uh, so we're going to do mesh here. We're going to drag this up. Now this actually has like a nice little uh, angle to it, right? So if we look at the original shape here that we're kind of referencing, it has a little bit of some beveling or something happening. So actually, what we could do, let's insert a single edge loop like this and have something. Let's drag this out here. This way we can... Yeah, let's do that. No, yes. Decisions. <laughs> Actually, let's not do that. I have a better way of doing it. Go here. I, I too, am also. Mass this off. There we go. That's the way to do it. That's the way. You just pull. There we go. Better keep it clean. Just printed my little Ravenstag guy. Oh, cute. Nice. Time to do the rest. Absolutely. Quick save. Curse of crashing. <laughs> okay, saving. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Chloe brings the crashes, doesn't they? Don't they? <laughs> Where's my pure refs? Uh, no, I don't have pure refs at the moment. I'm lazy and did Google searching. <laughs> All right, and then again, we're gonna do uh, a nice little point here. So let's actually get this going here. Let's grab these two, 
And then we're going to drag this down. I'll tap this. Let's actually mask this section off. And let's actually point of some sorts. Create some that kind of layer just a little bit. Could even turn on symmetry here. Let's grab this. Actually, then a little bit more like that, so it's kind of spiking. A now that's actually going to cause a little bit of an issue with the geometry itself. So let's give it a little bit of a special edge loop. Doesn't really cause too much. Issue. That'll work. We'll sculpt the rest. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll actually sculpt in the rest. Now let's actually here like such. This. Let's this. Like the handle is almost, it's almost repeated, but it's a little bit different. Backside. So Control Shift D duplicates. Put this in the middle. Rotate this around. So we actually have a little bit of variation. So this one's a little bit longer. This one's a little bit shorter. So we can actually manipulate this. So where it comes in to be a bit fun, come in and start refining this. You need a link or a channel or a platform to learn more about weapon props. You know, I'm being like dead serious. You should check out the show Forged and Fire. Hashtag not a sponsor. I watch that show so much. And because you're watching them create swords and shields and all sorts of stuff, like the way you know how to approach software, it really like helped me like realize how things get broke uh, broken down. And it's just really, really cool. Um, but for like uh, um, specific for about weapons, stuff like that, I actually think I have something for you. Um, if I were to go here and let's open up Z Classroom. So let's just go to Google. You could just type in Z Classroom. Right, and here. And if I remember right under Z Classroom, there is absolutely, I wanna say it's under immediate, we have a few things in here. So, okay, yeah, we do. So cool. So there is specifically bl bladed weapon props, which there's a bunch of parts on that. There's also some space sci-fi stuff in here as well. Um, so bladed weapon part one, how to approach that. Uh, two, as I scroll through an hour. Um, there's a ton of stuff in here. So I would say come through and check out this. In fact, I'll leave it with this one. I'll share this link and then you can take it from there and you can search and browse if you want. But this one will be really perfect for you. And this will show you exactly oop, how, to, how to do it. So go ahead and check that one out. Super cool. And again, it's a lot of fun because come through. It's older. It's an older version of ZBrush, four or eight, but the techniques still work. Everything works. So showcasing exactly how to like use deformers and how to create all these different shapes. This this will really get you started very fast. So um, definitely check that one out. Yep, I use default ZBrush UI for a couple of reasons. One, um, I teach it. Uh, so I'm the lead ZBrush trainer here at Maxon and also the training manager. So I actually teach ZBrush on a regular basis. Been using ZBrush now for about nine years. And so it makes it easy to have the default UI to get people integrated because that's how they're going to see this first and foremost. Uh, yeah, Forged in Fire. That's the name of the show. Um, but then two, 
ZBrush UI default is intuitively faster once you understand where everything is, and it helps retain the information of where things are the more you go and you seek it. So when you start creating custom UIs, like I believe in custom UIs, and so do we at ZBrush. Like we really love the fact that you can create your own UI structure you you. But the downside is there's too many times I've seen artists come in and say like, oh, I really love backface mask. So I put it here. And then they're using that feature. And then somebody says, hey, where's that feature? That's really cool. And then they're like, well, it's backface mask. I don't know where it's at. I, I found it five years ago and I just kept it on my own UI. So there's pros and cons, right? So as somebody who teaches for a living, this is something that I really think it's good to stay in the default UI just because it helps you retain that information faster. And I've worked on some of my friends' UI and I see what they're doing and I'm like, okay, this is really cool, but I know where everything is. So it sped up my workflow astronomically when um, when I started using the default UI and I was able to remember things a lot clearer. So I highly recommend using it or at least in the very beginning when like, learning. Um, but you know, you don't have to stay into that, but um, it's something that I find very, very useful. That's just my, my, um, but yeah, I dig it. You're so welcome, Sculptwitch. Uh, yep, that is a, that is a great method as well. Absolutely. So, all right, we're going to come here and I'm actually going to go move, curve, AccuCurve. I do want this. I'm a little bit more of a point, and I'm going to be adding my own sculptural feel to this. So, creating this edge to it. In fact, actually, instead of doing it with the normal move brush, uh, because it might be a little off center, what I could actually do is use infinite instead, make sure symmetry on accu curve with that guy give it a bit more keep it a little symmetrical again i'm going to be changing this the uh hand sculpt polished type of feel keep it a little bit rough and let's turn off accu curve so just give it a little bit Okay. Close enough for what I'm going for at the moment. That is such. Let's actually fill I'll fill it with color just so I have it. Perfect. Uh the name of the show was a forged fire. Yeah. Perfect. Um, it's really fun. Yeah. The one you're looking for. You can find it everywhere. Find them on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, make sure. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get stamped for copy, uh, uh, you know, copyright. Anyway, it was on the History Channel. Super cool. Check this show out. Really a lot of fun because you get to see how uh, blacksmiths, knife makers make this stuff. And it's also cool because you see when things fail. But yeah, it really gives a cool understanding of, of uh, bladed weapon uh, creation. And I, I've gotten a lot of inspiration. And there are weapons I didn't even know existed from this. So super, super cool. Hey, what's up, Snickles? Hey, uh, can you explain the workflow of hard surface and ZBrush in short? Yeah, basically in short, the way I approach hard surface and ZBrush is the same mentality that I do with character. You always start with primitive shapes to get your block out and you get your main design in there as quickly as possible. And then you make secondary forms to find and support the shape. And then you move tertiary or final cleanup. The idea in my mind when it comes to hard surface and ZBrush is specifically you're really just controlling your topology 
out the gate a lot better and a lot cleaner than you would with characters. Characters, you could be a little bit more messy and not as, uh, not as, um, you know, refined until the very end because ZBrush is all about creating with freedom. Like, we're not worried about topology typically when we talk about uh, ZBrush stuff, um, especially when it comes to characters. But with hard surface, we can be really clean. We can have clean topology. We can work with, uh, with, so it's, it really is just the way you want to approach. At the end of the day, um, I also believe that, in short, hard surface stuff never de deforms. Therefore, there's a little bit more freedom in how that topology can be. You can, have, you can get away with a little bit more triangles. You can get away with maybe a couple engons, if it makes sense. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't deform. So therefore, the animation process is a little bit more robust. Of course, at the end of the day, clean topology wins. You have clean UVs, you have clean topology, means that texturing and you know getting the final look is a lot easier achieved than if your topology is a mess. But treat hard surface like you would characters and you'll go very far. That's my that's my advice slash uh process in short. Hopefully that was helpful. Like here, I'm still keeping it very loose because I want there to be a little bit of an organic feel to this. I don't want it to be. Then I'll support it with some sculptural elements, and then I'll worry about topology cleanup later. Most of my most of my props, you know, if I do like small game assets or if I have like little just little just props and stuff like that, a lot of times Zebra Mesher bails me out. All right. Now we have this bladed weapon here, so let's get this let's get this uh, shape in a nice fun shape. Let's hit save. Oh, Forge and Fire! I watched that when I was a kid. That was a good show. Absolutely, yep, I love that show. Super cool. All right, let's get the blade in here. So this is actually going to be the hilt, and goals for twenty twenty four for me is to do better at naming convention. You know, practice what I preach. Um, let me go ahead and insert, and same thing. We're going to insert, and we're going to insert a, uh, a fun cube, and then we're going to initialize with G. Now we're going to play with this. So focus on the blade aspect here. Okay, so the cool part about the way I showed earlier. So if you're here earlier, I definitely was showcasing uh, the ability to do this. Do control drag on edge loops and so that's the same approach I'm not going to deviate too much from that that's how i'm going to be blocking out guy right here and i'm not going to be worried about the point so to speak we're going to be concerned about the overall feel weapon so we're not going to try to worry about the blade itself right away we'll sharpen it when we're done so let's go ahead and grab this guy then again so we got Small flare out, a secondary flare out, then it all comes. So that, so we're gonna drag this up, then a bit of a flare out, such. Drag this again, and I'm actually gonna refrain from scaling on every. I'm just gonna be using get a little bit of this. only scaling really on one end then again so we got that first little bit now it's going to come up boom not really worried about the radius so to speak fix the side of the balloon that Fun. You can actually start maybe angling. Here, of course, there's going to be. Uh, we can use a deformer to get that shape.
a decent shape to start with. A little key. Maybe let's come back. Realize that this shape is a little bit more straight. Back spine of the blade actually colors out a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty. now let's take a look at everything. What I'm gonna do actually before we do that is I'm going to grab the pizza box and we're gonna move this up. Turn everything on. Go. That centered, but keep that up here. And what we could do now is we could see this is a good size, which that's actually pretty good. That's actually nice. It's not too bad. That actually works out fairly well as far as the character is concerned. You can always make final adjustments afterwards, of course. And now with the blade itself, we will be needing to get a point. So let's actually go to geometry, weld, and at least get that center line there. So now we can work off of that. All right, Chloe, thanks for stopping in. Everyone, check out Chloe. Everyone, go go follow if you don't know Chloe. Chloe, when do you when do you stream? Let the world know. You just had a stream, actually, too, last Thursday, I think. But thanks for stopping by. Always fun to hang out. Oh, you did. Okay, great. I didn't see it. Well, everybody follow Chloe. <laughs> All right. So now let's take a look at this. So if I hit D for dynamic, of course, we get this, which is not pretty. So we're going to go ahead and refine this. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that we have a... Let's come in. Ledge loop. That's going to look. Oh, nice. Two. Add. I have some. Want that to be a little bit more points. I really do want this one to have a little bit of. So let's actually add here. Let's have this. That guy. Set the kind of bevel. Never. Never in the morning, too. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. Absolutely fair. Yep. Cool, too, is I want to see where the actual blade itself starts. We have another reference. Actually, what's cool is we have like a few different type of weapons. From this one, looks like it's double, double, which is fun. I like to do some blades with like sculptural feel to it, so I might actually put in the edge that way. That might be kind of. Uh, seeing if I can get another shot of the. That's fun. All right. Well, the cool part is we can also just make up stuff as we go. We can also add in our own interpretation. That's always fun to do. So, at any point in time, mouse freak. Any point in time, you can always do in your own interpretation and have things a little bit. Of All 
I find that sometimes avoiding a sharp edge is key. I have like kind of like a slightly dull edge. So it looks really sharp. Sometimes I'll do I'll put in this edge here really close. Pick this. Looks really sharp far, but then what we want to do is we actually want this to you want this to come edge. A little bit more. That's cool. Let's actually add that. That. bit better. Take that for now. Bow this out a little bit. I'm in here. Let's block this off. Let's do bend curve. Add in our Take that. Left. Decent block out. We'll take it. Let's go ahead and save. Awesome. Well, it's almost noon. But like I said, we're probably going to go a little bit. There's my helmet shoe. This is my original helmet shade. This is my block out. <laughs> I don't need this anymore, so let's go ahead and delete that guy. And then guy right here. We don't need any of that. All right, I did I do need to clean up his face a little bit, but we have some block outs of things that are gonna be important to him, which is good. Let's actually come here. Block out. Alright, I think too, let's actually look at and again, this is this is something that I do a lot where I will go through and not get super detailed on stuff. I will just get it relatively in there. Because then my mindset says work on everything at even level of of uh, detail. So when something looks too detailed or I start pushing something to be too detailed, it will eventually look weird. So it keeps me grounded a little. Um, I do want it to, and I did get some reference, but... I don't know exactly what they're called, but uh, Greeks want to look at adding a little bit more information. Call them a kilt. I don't know if that's the official name of it. Um, start learning some of my terminology for Greek mythology, but. Trying to see if I can get some good reference. Okay, so this looks like to just wrapped around. Maybe it's one piece that then gets wrapped. Also has a little bit of separation. So really, we got to decide where we want to go. Okay. Okay. There's some variations of that. So let's actually make this a little bit different. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is let's split this, actually. So I want to actually add a secondary layer to this. Um, maybe they're called tassels. I'm not quite sure, actually. But 
His is shredded because he's been in combat and he's died. And he wasn't very good, that's why he died. So maybe we'll keep it pretty simple for now and we'll decide if we want to go further with it. But I think I want to split this off a little bit. Maybe make this into a couple pieces. So, the way I'm thinking about going about this, actually splitting this up, torn piece, and then ultimately separate that out. Let me try something. I haven't actually tried doing it this way. So, I'm going to get Z Modeler. And we'll turn off the thickness. And. I'm going to hover over here, and I'm going to say slice mesh. Same thing here. I'm going to say slice mesh. Cut this at something. This should be sliced. Here and let's say we're going to polygroup fill. You know what? I'm making this one. Be that one to be sliced now. Make it too. Fill this. Complete hidden. There we go. That's fine. Okay, so we have this piece now. This is one piece that's just wrapping around. Then map. Let's actually pull this behind. Lock that side off. Go. That's that side. Now we can bring this in relatively. Thickness, I can see exactly where it's butting up. I have AccuCrate. Oh. Yep. Gives it just a little bit more thickness. Gate. Let's turn AccuCrate back on. Feels like it's. Better. That. And now I actually want to create those. I think I want to create, I kind of have both. I kind of think I want both on it. So I think I do want some. Because I'm looking at this statue right here. It looks like he has like the kind of skirt underneath. And then it looks like he has like that armor plating that goes all the way around. Pretty cool. So I'm thinking that's the approach I want to take on that. That's probably what we'll do. It means that this actually is bigger. Fill this in. Bigger.
that. And then now let's get that actual actual plating on. And I'm thinking we could probably do this in a few ways. Let's try the let's try my the first way that's coming. So we actually then hit save, build. It's dirt. Let's just do plane solo. Let's just come in here, reconstruct a few times. Yeah, pretty simple shape. Also, just get dirt delete that. Clear this out. That's taking a look. Kind of flare just a little bit. They're also round. Not super. Turn on symmetry. Let's put that there. Bring that down. That'll give me a nice kind of round effect. Keeps the keeps it clean. Keeps it simple. Something like that. And we'll leave this single-sided geometry for now. That's what we'll do. And let's just do it the way my brain is. The holiday. I'm not going to complicate it. <laughs> so let's shrink this down. Put this, put this in the center. Shrink this. Right there. Perfect. Fill it like such. There go. And I'm going to over here far enough away. Go turn weld. Turn on symmetry. Way too big. That and then we're and let's do the let's do ourselves a favor. Let's actually just turn on belt pieces. We don't need to do else. Let's just All right. So while we do this, has anybody played the latest God of War? I.e. the latest DLC. If so, what do you think of it? Playing a lot of Street Fighter lately. Honestly, that's the thing that pulled me away for a couple days. <laughs> I'm okay with these plates kind of overlapping. They're supposed to be movable. Um, they're like tassels, right? So I'm 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 expecting that these things are supposed to be able to move freely, so that they aren't super restricted. <laughs> it's all <done. laughs> pretty good at Street Fighter. I'm no master at it, but uh, yeah, you know, it's not gonna be easy. I didn't say it'd be easy, you know. I would say the people have a good chance on Street Fighter of beating me the first few times, and then if I start learning your play style, that that that's that's when trouble. That's when we get into it. <laughs> Holden's really good too. The lamp for you.
where this is where we get to kind of like right so where I'm actually going to turn okay so here first we're going to get here so that it's even good so we kind of cheated those last couple but ultimately that's going to work out just fine bring this in again we're working with single sided geometry so the fun part about that is we don't have to worry about lighting that will go to poly groups auto group and then we're going to do um we will do a by micro binary do a mirror and weld because then we can still keep symmetry turned on and refine and move these around so that it fits a little nicer and we could do a quick select. Space these out a little bit. We can see here our spacing got a little funky just because we we're manually placing them, but I sometimes I'm a fan of man. I feel like it brings a little bit of authenticity. Because then it feels a little bit handcrafted. Still want to keep clean mesh, but we would like our would like it to feel like somebody actually so a bit of asymmetric you'll see never hurt anyone the real kicker will be look it doesn't need to even if it has a little bit of feeling off when we zoom out right Good at what we're doing. A Roman who hurts. Leonard, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I dig. Learn something new every day. Okay. Let's actually hit. Dynamic subdiv and add in some thickness. Now we get to play with skirt, underlining skirt, and the blue. So now see here, I'm actually running into, uh, running into, but. So, want to push in the right stuff and pull out the right. Right. Now, I probably should have done this start, but I now just kind of thought about it. This is what we're going to What I just thought about is we should give it like a little bit of bow. Like it should be kind of like a rounded thing. So we're going to Manually do. I should have thought about this in the design, but that's why you can learn from me. That's my excuse. Stick it to it. Um, we'll come through. I'm gonna mask off the. Could have done this in the design, but should have done it because it's too straight, right? Didn't think I had to, but that's okay. 
the, that's why we learn from our. So I'm going to center and then that bow out a little, giving that a little bit, like too straight. Now it's here. I think I think that feels. That's a little. Then, like that feels a little bit more authentic. Bit. Take it. What happens when you have nothing that big? <laughs> well, you know, hey, you gotta love it. Now we can make this. Add in just a little bit. Go. Oh, the stuff that you learn. Love it. All right, cool. That's actually a lot of fun. Let's look at like that. So now we have we have a little bit more depth to them. Now gonna need some armor. So if we go back to here, definitely have some armor. So it looks like we have like just like a like an arm guard, like a shoulder guard that's kicking on here. So we could build that with some strapping on there as well. That will look. Also, should pro I'll probably end up adding some leather belts at some point. Well, but let's first get a little bit more information. And I don't like his face at the moment. Just gonna call out my own self. I don't like it at the moment, but that's just me. we'll fix that. There's a lot I want to do to his face, but I got all the stuff in there. So I'm gonna call this. So now let's get let's actually get um get that shoulder piece on there. So let's get a cylinder. Not even going to try to shape this symmetry. I'm going to customize this straight to it. Place it where it needs to be. A little bit of an angle here. Same workflow. I always do edge loop. <laughs> Alex, girl, that's not nice. <laughs> I know, it's my design. <laughs> I don't like his face. <laughs> I, Alex, I needed that. <laughs> uh, good, too good. Okay. Oh, man, that's all I'm thinking. <laughs> all right, let's go to poly groups and group my normals and. Uh, let's go ahead and section, section. This going to go ahead. Hidden. Don't need it. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of visual thickness. So I don't want that to be. I want some. So I can see. It could also turn on double, but I don't really want so this will be fine. So do something like this here. And then we want to know where the actual shoulder plate is going to stop. And for the most part, it's pretty like it's pretty probably gonna hover over with the modeler. Which here. There. 
is where we want. Expand this, you can fill this however we see fit. That one. Now here, let's go, grab, guy, this guy, hurt this, and we kind of spread that out that way. Wow, always coming in hot. Right, let's that that was unnecessary. <laughs> kind of floating a little. Good. Again, let's go to dynamic. Let's add a little bit of thickness. This, and taking a look at the design that they chose, it looks like they have like a couple pieces that are attached to each other. It's almost riveted at this point. Probably have some a little bit more. So instead of splitting it like that, I'm going to duplicate this. Bring this over. That guy. Secondary. Fun. Then let's actually get like a simple plate. We could attach this separate. We could extend off of this line and make a, a secondary piece. Because that's kind of what we see in some of the reference we have. How it's like expanded out that way. Let's actually try that. See what I'm talking about. So turn this on and then let's do. Now I want it to be a second. That's gonna be complicated. I'd rather imagine it's a second piece that then got welded on. So what I'll do is let's just go color, let's fill that object here. Check that down. Add this in. You could always stitch it if we think that works, but sometimes I find it's easier to just make a separate piece than ultimately find yourself. The buckle piece I got riveted on and then. I'm kind of true. We can always refine that later. Hey, Tattoon, how are you doing? Hey, Maxon, I'm a big fan. I just started Cinema 4D, and I'm really hoping to get better, but I don't have any reason. 
courses, and you have really good courses. I have your back. I got you. The not a world. This goes for Cinema 4D. This goes for ZBrush. Any of our Maxon products. There's actually a getting started series in all of our major. So if you go to, you go to. Maxon.net, and I'll share the link, don't worry. Maxon.net, you go here, and then you go under Learn, and there's Cineversity, which is where the majority of our stuff is, and you'll see out the gate, there is a entire Getting Started series. So for Cinema 4D, we have EJ, who does this whole like glass bowl and a crab scene, which is really cool. And then there's Getting Started with Redshift with Ellie. She's amazing, and she covers the Redshift um, internally, and then we have getting started with the universe and getting started with ZBrush. Getting started with the universe is with Seth Worley, and then um, Anna Carolina, her and I worked together. She recorded these videos, and we sat down and created the Getting Started series. So, really shout out to her because she's amazing. So, here's the main bulk of resources for that. And yeah, EJ is so awesome. Absolutely. Um, so, this is your getting started, and also, too, there are tutorial based projects. So if you go here, go to all tutorials. Um, you can actually come in here and filter out like, oh, okay, I want Cinema 4D. So here's some Cinema 4D tutorials. Um, if you want ZBrush, you could choose Cinema 4D ZBrush, or you could say, I just want ZBrush. And what's also fun is that Cineversity's goal is to, what we do is we actually connect with artists and we find third party tutorials like Michael Pavlovich is probably one of the, one of our top uh, third-party resources ZBrush, and anytime that they do something they'll they'll showcase and we actually spotlight them and then you can go watch their tutorials on uh, on their YouTube to support them as well so a lot of really fun stuff here uh, VFX and chill did a great one for zebra for beginners and the image says everything so really really cool stuff so definitely come check that out um, let me share this link for you um, we're, we're also doing uh, some translations as well. So we have some series getting started in different languages that will be coming. So really, really fun. And then if you go up to learn again, if you're more specific or you are unaware and you're in the ZBrush world, then we have Z Classroom, which actually predates Maxon. When Pixelogic was Pixelogic, this was a spot in which they did. They had ZBrush Core, ZBrush Core Mini, and ZBrush. And it's a great way to get started. Uh, ZBrush for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So um, if you have all of Max on one, then you have access to ZBrush, you have access to CD, as well as Red Giant Universe, Redshift, etc. So there's a lot of resources here. And as a company, we're constantly looking at resources. So we're looking at in expanding and improving upon Cineversity. And not to just, you know, to just really classify and showcase this, you go under, um, let's go back to Max on's. Um, if you're a student of like college, high school level, um, we actually have a student teacher license, which is ridiculously dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. Um, so in the United States, I could say it's 20 for the year. It's billed annually, but um, the, the price equivalent in your region, country. So definitely go check that out because that's how you can get all of Max on One for $20 at USD. And it's really, really good. And it's for a year. And you use it how you need it. So definitely check that out if you're aware of that. Here to enhance my texture deals with much. Recommend focusing on RE or Substance. Tattoo, that's a great question. Um, I personally use Substance. Mari, in, uh, from, as I understand it, I don't use Mari much, but Mari is more uh, specific to. FX industry. However, um, Adobe and Maxon have Substance Painter, or you're getting Maxon One this year. You're a new customer. You have the ability to get Substance Painter bundled in with Maxon One for really affordable price. Um, Substance is more well-rounded and used in more industries, um, in my opinion. That's at least what I see. I could be wrong, but I would say Substance and Mari they're very similar in the way they approach. I think Substance has a little bit more support at the, at the moment, and I'm seeing a lot of studios use Substance over Mari, 
but in VFX, I see Mari quite often. So it just depends on where you want to go. Ultimately, the choice is up to you, but um, I think Substance might have an easier, um, um, an easier learning curve when you get into it. Um, I have been using Substance for about five years now, and I really like it because it feels like a 3D version of Photoshop. So that I, I recommend Substance first and foremost, but the cool part is skills are transferable. So if um, at any point in time you're like, okay, I've learned Substance or Mari and I want to go learn the other, then it's definitely like you know how to texture. You've learned how to texture and now you're just learning software. So I, I personally encourage go check out um, go check out uh, uh, Substance. But that's my personal recommendation. Just, you know. You currently follow Sun University courses. Is there a way I can get it? All I have is three. I want to be extremely good at it. Um, for mentorships, I don't know who's actually available for mentorships. But I'll tell you what. I'll do you one better, actually. Because um, it's at no cost to you. Um, I I personally have a Discord, and the Discord itself has a lot of great artists in there. That is a great community, and a lot of us use ZBrush and some and uh, and various tools. Um, but for the most part, like it's a bunch of artists coming in and helping each other grow. It's a great community. So if you want to pick your brain and talk to like-minded people, there is my personal Discord. But also too, if you're more into ZBrush. There is a official ZBrush Discord, um, which again has also like-minded people. Well, so the first link is mine. Second link, official ZBrush. Um, but either way, there are a lot of great uh, Discords out there you can join. Can any of these classes help out a student that is getting started in printing? I actually personally have plans uh, on the Maxon side to do a DPP series coming up in the next few months. Um, We'll have to get a more specific date, but I actually want to cover 3D print prep, and I do that occasionally on my screens here. So, but if you have specific questions for 3D printing, let me know, and I can answer them uh, with the way I handle it coming in for Rush. But I do have plans um, to have a guest artist. Won't say who because it's film talks, but have a guest come on and showcase uh, good workflows. Uh, from ZBrush and leaving into 3D printing slicers. So more to come on that for sure. There's plans to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flare this guy out a little. Like this so that it's not pinching into his actual shoulders. That's actually more supporting on his shoulder. And we're going to all this patch. Actually, see what we'll do here. Actually, out. Bada bing, bada boom. Four. Yep. I'm going. To come in here and move this in alignment with this, with the intention of welding this together. Have the an idea of welding this. Together. Get this pretty close to each other. Go. Quite possibly. Uh, this. Get that attached. Stay like that. Yes, that's going to be a dirt and subway. And this is creased, and I don't want that. So let's go here, crease and uncrease. And we're running, we're running over today. I want, I want to do a little bit more. So we might go until one o'clock. Christ to no one, Pavlovich has a three D print series. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Uh, hello, Ian. Any advice or guidelines for practicing anatomy? Much greetings. Yes, absolutely. I have the best. Yes, hundred percent. I have a lot. I have a lot of opinions on studying and learning. 
Um, hopefully you're ready for it. <laughs> okay. So everything I'm going to show you, you don't absolutely need, but you need some form of it. That makes sense. I'm going to go full screen for this. Hi, right, full screen. So Anatomy Tools has nice, fun acro shit. And I actually have a few of them. I have a male and a female version. I will not show the female because there's a lot of detail to it, and I don't know what. But here is the male ecroche. And actually, shout out to Mr. Raphael Grissetti. He has one as well, which I 3D printed about four years ago when he released it. I think this one is still free. He has another one that's actually uh, an improved version, and it's really good. Highly recommend that. But get a ecroche of some size. I actually have an ecroche on my wall up over here. That's a poster. I have this. What's cool about this one is the ability to actually take off the arms and really just take a look at the anatomy. And you're really showcasing and studying this stuff 100%. And then practice is key. The ability to over here and remove pieces, kind of take the head off, and you can see all the detail in the head. These are really, really good. So get yourself an ecroche. This is going to help improve your anatomy so, so much. Um, first and foremost. Second off, I recommend just getting anatomy books. Um, if I had to recommend a book of anatomy that every artist should have, whether you're 2D or 3D, that would be anatomy tools. I have a PDF version of it, but there is a hard version of it. So uh, not, not anatomy tools, anatomy for sculptors. Sorry. Anatomy tools is that company right there. So anatomy uh, for sculptors is a great one. And that is a very affordable book and really worthwhile. But any anatomy book, like I actually just picked up another one. I picked up this one very recently um, because this was a huge game changer. This was Human Anatomy for Artists. And what's really cool about that is open this up, good page, gives you some really in-depth drawings and real life imagery. So those photographs as well as drawing breakdowns and it really goes in depth. Now I'm somebody who doesn't remember the names of anatomy well. However, that's not the point. You don't need to be a linguist, be clever or, uh, uh, or um, well-versed in anatomy. You just need to understand how the body works. So it's helpful if you know the name of things, but please don't beat yourself up and be like, I cannot pronounce or remember for the life of me, blah. I actually have a hard time learning second languages. I've been trying my whole life to do so. Um, but nonetheless, uh, just if you have a hard time with the name, don't beat yourself up as the way. But get yourself a really good anatomy book. And then last but not least, um, practice makes permanent. And if you can't afford any of those things I just mentioned to you, don't worry because ZBrush has your back. And if you open up the light box in ZBrush and you go to and then you go to Ryan Kingsland anatomy model and you double click this. It's a tool, not a project. So here's the cool part. So it's a female version, Ecroche, that has a full skeleton to it. And then if you look at the sub tools on the side here, what's fun is it actually every muscle that he put in here has the actual name. Right? So uh, Latimus dorsi, uh, Traspezius, pectoralis, right, external oblique. Like, if you are unfamiliar with these, you can actually come through and be like, that's the pectoralis, and oblique, yes, uh, solus, uh, re uh, rectus, uh, uh, abdomen. <laughs> Language with Ian. <laughs> rectus abdominis. So, you know, like, like, this is a great resource for you. Now, what's cool is male and female anatomy um, there, there's a lot of similarities and there are very few differences. The differences in male and female anatomy come typically to skeletal placement. And then of course, to how some of the body actually, like how it wraps around, like, you know, women typically have a little bit more of an hourglass shape or their, their, their way that their, their waist tapers in is usually a little bit different than men. Um, but at the end of the day, everybody's different. And so um, the, the main ones for me is that bone, bone structure, like shoulder width, hip placement, 
those are the things that are different between biological male and female. And so you kind of learn the differences. But once you make one base mesh, you can make a female base mesh a male and vice versa, right? So just, but here's a great reference of how the bicep actually is engaging into the forearm and how it wraps underneath the deltoid here. You know, how the tricep is broken down into pieces, um, hence the word cry. And then two, you'll start realizing that like, oh, wow, if I take a close look at like the actual arm itself like the deltoid to the bicep to the forearm really take a look at this the leg is not much different if the if the you know if the buttocks itself was actually more like the deltoid right because it's a it's a hinge it's a it's a ball and socket joint um same thing here with the with the shoulder it's ball and socket it rotates it rolls around so there's a lot of similarities where like you know your hamstring acts a lot like your bicep there are obviously differences, but there are similarities, which helps your brain kind of see all that. So uh, your calf is very similar to your forearm. Like there are differences, but yet there are similarities. So it's once you start seeing this stuff, you'll, you can't unsee it. And this will just help. So time in anatomy is what's going to be um, really beneficial. And like I said, this ships with ZBrush under the light box. So just a light box tool, anatomy. And that's a great way to get started in anatomy without any additional cost. So there's a ton of stuff and all of that will definitely be going. So hopefully that helps you uh, in your journey of anatomy. What I will say is anatomy in and itself is a journey. Like it is, I secretly joke that I'm becoming a doctor all the time because the more I learn about anatomy, the more I'm like, oh yeah, I can, I understand that point. Actually, fun fact, I when I went to, I went to, get a physical checkup like a couple months ago. The doctor asked how things were and I was just explaining like, well, this hurts was probably connected to here, which does this. So like my knees are sore, but my hips are kind of weird, you know, so maybe I don't, I need to exercise more. And just talking to him, even though I didn't know the names of things, he understood that I understood anatomy and that actually made the conversation easier. So in, in, in learning anatomy, you actually get to kind of help yourself twofold and you get to communicate that stuff to to uh to to professionals so so win win whoop whoop yeah and working out helps a lot great point carvin yeah you, when you work out you understand how the body moves and how the body functions and because of that that then transfers to your posing so carbon super helpful absolutely yep 100 percent. in fact carbon i need i i gotta start working you just reminded me i need to do that more i've been lazy man but um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really fun. I enjoy anatomy so much. I really just appreciate and love um, just how complicated the human body is. And I think uh, the benefits of being an artist that we get to, we get to really explore those. So, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to provide this advice. A hundred percent, absolutely. You want, I want to 3D print your GoPro in metal. <laughs> Perfect. I'm in bulk phase because I sprained an ankle. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> hey, man, take it. We all need a little time off. Uh, I I think we would live to a thousand. If... <laughs> of course, you would think that, Leonard. <laughs> but you're probably not wrong. All right, so we're gonna copy this on over. We're gonna. Uh, actually, what we're gonna do here. Actually, this one, and we're gonna hit in. Go so that's up there. The I want to do that was because I actually hear this. Go to. Or mirror the mirror this guy over. Like I said, we'll end up welding this together. And sometimes this is the approach I love to take when it comes to um getting things situated in it correctly.
of that system. That's now medicine university type of conversation. Yeah. Uh oh, I moved. There's a hundred years off my life. <laughs> my mom is too smiley, make him angry. Yeah, we're gonna. I mentioned earlier that I wasn't a fan of his face currently, but we're still in blockout phase. I personally don't dive into that stuff until I'm a hundred percent satisfied with the direction. We'll get to that eventually. Oh, you joined the Discord. Awesome. Well, welcome in. And like I said, we're we're here to help. So. And anytime you see me live streaming, I usually live stream every Wednesday from 10 to noon uh, here at Maxon. That's I love live streaming and giving out the ZBrush knowledge that I have. Uh, so at any point in time, this is where we usually are. We're running over a little bit today because I want to finish a few thoughts. And it's also just last stream of the day. So last stream of the year, sorry, rather. So, so we're going, we're going nuts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to prep to weld this together. So, so I'm going to a little bit, giving it a little bit more space, something like that. Okay, we'll hit save. Anytime you do a major change, make sure to save. So, all right. Now we're going to come in here. This is the main plate. So I'm going to move down. Good, merge down. Good. All right. So it just all turned white because I didn't pick color. Oop. Go. I went to go fill color and instead hit fill layer. That's what happens. It's always fun. Okay. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and stitch together. So I'm just going to hover over an edge. We're going to go to bridge. I'm going to say bridge these two. Just like that, that's well together. I'm gonna do the exact same side. Say bridge and bridge. So this was just a much easier way for me to come in here and act fixed up the way I wanted it. Now we're gonna get that out. This. Now, if I hit this, this will all be one piece. Perfect. Now, I'm not having it smooth at the moment. That in itself is going to make things look different. So if I hit too smooth, right, it's going to give me something like this. Sorry, not smooth. Subdivide smooth. Phew, there we go. So now we start seeing this and this. Right. Now let's fix the topology so that that doesn't happen. We're going to go insert single edge loop. And I'm first going to support the edge loop that are going to support my main. This, like that. This. And here, we're just going to come. Multiple edge loop. Now we have something that's a little bit more structured and that looks a lot better. Two. Here, we're just going to go insert single. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's how I like to control those edge loops. You can also just subdivide that up one time. Give me a little bit more thickness. All right. Back to V1, and now this is what we have. This is a lot better. I'm liking the shapes of that so far, so I can live with that. We're gonna have a belt be going across his body uh, to hold this in place. So we'll have a shoulder strap, well, as a rib cage strap. Probably going to be tied from here, going across, over, then joining and joining. I'll have to take a look at the design. 
Uh, what graphics tablet do you use? Uh, so I use both. So I actually, uh, what I mean by both is I actually, I now have uh, courtesy of Sense Labs. So thank you, Sense Labs. I actually have a 24 inch display tablet from Sense Lab, which is quite nice. I also uh, use a Wacom Cintiq from time to time. Um, so, and I actually have that. I have it's actually my second monitor on my personal machine. So I have Cintiq and I have Sense Lab. Um, I've been using Sense Labs on and off now for the last year as their display tablet just came out. And it is quite comparable to uh, to the Cintiq for um, for a lot less money. It's actually a lot cheaper, so it's actually it's actually great, and it's really really good. Highly check, uh, highly recommend checking them out. Um, and I've been using the new Cintiq uh, the new Cintiq um, display at work, and I, I also really like that one. I think that one's quite nice. So really good machines, but I do use both. Um, as they're really awesome. Gets the job done. All right, just cleaning up a little of that topology layer. That was, in fact, I don't need that loop. Okay. No, I don't need that loop there. That actually, can... just that. In fact, that loop needs to go there. That needs to support that shape. There we go, that's better. All right, he's coming along quite nice. I actually like it. Yeah, we definitely need to fix it. <laughs> we need to fix his face. All right, get the belt on there. Let's hit save, and then let's get belts on there. Again, I am pulling for some reference. I'm utilizing some of the concept art sheet or the concept sheets that I'm seeing all over the place. There's a few people that have done it. Just kind of getting a sense of like, all right, this strap goes around and comes back on the backside, and then it has a strap that goes. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. way we're going to do that. So I actually am going to do something a little bit different for this. So I'm actually going to duplicate the body. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the things we don't need. So I don't need anything more this section right here. This is really all I need to happen, right? So I'm going to go ahead and Delete hidden. So we'll go and modify topology, delete hidden. And just for the sake of fun, I'm actually going to smooth this down. I'm going to dynamesh. We'll close all my holes. Okay, and I'm not worried about color, but the reason for this is that I'm actually able to get a little bit of a clear surface here, but still retain a lot of that. Shape. And what we're going to do is so we see where this body is and we need to strap to cross. Now, more than likely, let's do one more thing here. Have this guy and this guy, and let's bring this line away. Go, being a little bit more just up. Have it more like maybe just. You know what it is? I think it's too small. There we go. That feels That feels right. It just about it feels like cool part about design is we get to kind of play and see what looks that's going to be good. All right. So now we have main shape here that we're really just need to focus on. So what I'm going to need is we're going to come here and we're going to do slice curve. I want this to out there. That way it wraps around and then back up. So it's wrapping underneath the rib cage or armpit region. And it's going to wrap back around. That's that's really where I want to go with that. I'm not worried about the strap on top. So let's try it more. Say something like that. That'll be good. Then we'll add a strap on top. Hide this. Strap right about. That will work out just. Crap. That we have that. Do. Need to do that. We'll clear the mask. 
it on there. Let's go ahead and grab our flat curve. This guy. Help us get shape. And then, yeah, we'll hit seven. And we'll frame that mesh. And we'll... this will wrap around like that. And now we get to decide the thickness. of. Actually, let me see one other thing. Let me try flat snap curve. We'll, we'll, we'll build this together. So this will be good. This is yeah, I think that's a good size. Yeah, that feels like a good belt size. So let's tap that and let's get the get the purple on there looking a little nicer. That's great. And let's go ahead and delete hidden. So modify topology, hidden. Uh they're uh they're for the ones who are professionals. Um well it depends for the tablets, it depends on what you're going for. So all those tablets that I mentioned, they're good for long term. I had my personal Wacom for now six years and it still goes strong. Um so if you need something a little bit more like affordable, then XP Pen would be a pretty good one as well. But for displays, I personally feel you get get what you pay for. I had a, a an XP pen display and it was pretty good, but um it was small and it was a little bit hard to focus on. The thing is you don't really need a display tablet though. Like I still have my Wacom uh, Intuos and I also have a Sense Lab mini tablet and those work those work out fine too. Really just what you're in the market for, but um with anything it's like, you know, it, it's an investment in your in your uh in your art and in your so um, something to just to look at. But yeah. Okay. So let's do this. So we're going to go with poly groups and auto groups. You can see these are not welded together, but this one is. Now this belt strap needs to be separated. Got to keep it separate. And that's all I could do. So let's, so let's, let's just go ahead and start hidden. Now these ones right here, we're going to weld these together, right? So going to this guy, I'm gonna pull it back. Same thing right here. We're gonna take this guy and we're gonna pull it back. Okay, now that we have that, same thing that we did before, we're gonna go ahead and weld this together. Go with bridge. Right, that works. And we can actually through here. Go, perfect. Now we have this, and then I could just come over here, and insert, and delete that edge. That edge. Let's slide over so it's a little here. Not dynamesh that. Not a good idea. Dynamesh off. Okay, great. Then let's actually remove. Well, we could keep the whole crease on there if we wanted to. So then it feels a little bit natural. Such. Now, I'm not going to want this one on this side, though. This is not connecting all the way through. This is stopping here. It's actually holding the plate itself. So with transparency turned on, what you do is say, like, okay, let's actually go polygroup here and polygroup here. Okay? Then we can grab just the purple. Go with auto groups like that. All of that is hidden. Come in here and we'll delete hit. Nice. Huey on? I've never really used Huey on. That's nice. That's that sounds cool. Now we have this. Yeah, it's all preference. I personally believe tablets are just preference. Whatever works for you. I have a buddy of mine who hates display tablets. Like, nope, don't stand them, don't like them, don't use them. Hey, man, that works for you. <laughs> do what you got to do. 
over. Now this will be the connecting spot. Again, let's add some thickness to it, right? So here you see this is rounding a little bit. BZM for the modeler. Let's go ahead and insert edge loop. Perfect. Then here, okay, we're going to go ahead and transparency. Hit D for dynamic, and then let's add a thickness. Then with this thickness, let's actually add some. And we're kind of brownish, and I'm going to use the same color as I did handle. That sucker. That. And then now we get to just really play with the shapes a little bit. That's going to be attached there. A little bit. Okay, we got a weird crease right here. So let's just crease and uncrease all. Doing that, we can control the strap thick or width. Oh, done, done. So, at least for now. Now let's hit the move. Now this is pretty thick, and we want this to be a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to drop the thickness. I'm going to push that thickness out to front. Lot, lot. Now this thickness is about called it point zero zero seven. Fine. I'm gonna remember that because we're gonna do the same thing here. So color fill that object dynamic on remove our thing resolve dead let's use modeler add in edge loop control. Good, say something like that. And dynamic subdiv, 0 0.0 thickness. Go. Now we're going to go ahead and up. Here, fun is we actually are going to this down under. If it was stitched together underneath. Now, there's not a whole lot of topology here, so not a ton of room. The moment to make fine tune adjustments, get it close. Half the battle, anyway. Such, again, same thing. Underneath, out. We'll add buckles and all that sort of holes and stuff later. Now that's that feels a little bit. Go ahead and save. What time is it? All right, we got a few more minutes. We'll we'll end at one o'clock. So, all right, let's look at. All right, let's actually take a look at his face anatomy. Want to clean this up a bit. Put him here. Shift S, we'll stamp it. Do or sorry, not F V. All right. 
take a look at this. Now he's he's not creepy enough, and I want him to be. So look at some of, of the reference that we got here. Might actually just open his mouth and work on his mouth a little bit more horrifically, because looks like their mouth are either closed and clenched or they're. Screwed. There's really no in between. So let's change that. Yeah, kind of cool jaw separation and stuff. So, which is pretty. That's pretty fun. Digging that. Well, I love the first guy. I actually love them all. They're really amazing. Good job. Tell the team just really love. So here, so let's actually. All right, that's looking pretty. That's looking pretty wicked. So we want something like that, which is good. Also, too, you could tell, might be a little hard to see, but there is definitely, like, some some direction in expression through the anatomy. So, it's not, like, true respected anatomy. Like, there's bone ridges that are angle, that are angular. This image looks to be pretty. Yeah. Looks like, unless that's the piece hard to see that's okay get to figure that out so let's do a little bit of head shape actually you know what we probably could should i separate it let's do this let's actually open his mouth up a little bit more give us a little bit more room go geometry proxy pose don't know what proxy pose is it's really a new algorithm that allows us to create a proxy mesh drop the size of the topology to something more manageable this ask this this and this A little bit cool about the jaw itself if you're not aware is that it's a hinge joint so anytime your jaw rotates actually it rotates up here from the top as it rotates down it actually moves forward so it's never just a true like it's not like it's just a single rotated point it actually actually kind of pushes you as you this rolls back, but then jaw itself kind of hinges. Pretty cool little thing. So I'm gonna do something closer to what we're looking for. Turn proxy post back. So in a sense, this is kind of like. You're, if you're not sure, in a sense, this is basically like um, just created a temporary low resolution mesh that I could easily manipulate and then get that, get the rest of that back. Let's actually, go. I like Alpha 8 a lot of this. I'm going to pull, speaking of anatomy, I'm going to pull the head. And what's cool, and I'll go full screen for this so you can see what I'm going to be going for. Full screen here. So what's cool about it is you see these muscles. That focus a second. You see these muscles right over here? We're trying to replicate this structure here. If we look at the skeleton structure right over here, see the, might be a little hard to see, white. That white light is crazy. Bad lighting on my part, but you can actually see kind of bone here a bit on the side. How that folds under, really thin. That creates a really cool gap. We're going for that. Ah, my sunscreen. <laughs> and all right. Okay. So, um, so we're going for something like that. So taking a look at how that is, and again, good to have anatomy reference here. Right, so we're gonna be 
kind of pulling this back in a little bit. But we're also going with an artistic here to this. So I'm going to be pushing this back in, giving me a little bit of that. He has all this kind of skin on top of him, so kind of choosing where that skin goes away and when that skin shows, how close to the bone is it. Here. What I should probably do, actually, probably go to the gums. Cool. These are pre-made teeth by me. It's always fun. So I'm going to hit it on. That's not what. Realize that I didn't delete hit on all. Let's do that, and let's split. Teeth are separate. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and split it in so the teeth are separated. What I want to do is I actually want to go down on these gums. Save and emerge down. I'm these are relatively connected. Off. Frame dynamic. Hitting too much. All right, trim dynamic. Start blending this. So a little bit more monsterish. Type vibe, right? The more gross. Do is we dynamesh this together. Minus dynamesh on. Go. Now it looks a little bit nastier. Yep. Yeah. Now we can we can now affect these teeth a little. Teeth look to be teeth look to be between human and not. So see what we could do. Give him like some bigger canine, right? So let's go. Uh, let's go. Them. Pull this out. Let's give him some. Go for it. Vampire teeth, baby. Let's go. Some... Yeah, and this is actually where AccuCurve is really helping me out here.
same thing for his little baby teeth. Well, pretty much, yeah, this will wrap up the stream for today. Finish this thought here. Hopefully you guys enjoy today's stream. The last one for uh, for me for the 2020 year. So we'll be back uh, in like the second or third week of January. I was going to take some vacation and stuff, but probably see me in Discord and all stuff. So definitely feel free to out in that subdivide a few times like a little you'll hear that subdivide a few times bam bam Heath, what's up, Matthew Keane? How you doing, man? How's it going? Stopping by, buddy. Just getting ready to wrap up. I decided to take the stream a little longer today. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> so I definitely visited the dentist today. I'm wrapping up stuff before the new year. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah. Is anyone available to help with license rush? Uh, that all. Sh um, if you're talking about personal license renewals, um, you can put in a support ticket if you have specific questions. But a lot of that should be able to be handled online, as far as I'm aware of. I, I don't know officially. Um, but I mean, a lot of people are taking vacation at the moment, so um, might be kind of hard. But I would say. You know, put in put in a, a ticket if you need specific help with something. Um, but depends on your it depends on the question. I I don't handle licensing. So, so. Is there something in particular you're looking for? Might be able to point you in a direction. Okay, I think we'll look at that group. Um, for a little time. Here's that down. Put his tongue down. No, it also looks weird to you. Can call it out right now. Ah, look at those teeth. Uh, let's actually create a little bit of a mouth bag for him. That's not. Out real quick. Get a little bit more of a recognizable natural. okay that feels a little bit better we're still going to do some more cleanup so this is pretty much where we are with our block out right now so we got shield and a sword pretty much laid out today pretty decent definitely need some cleanup but it's a start 
good. Again, a lot of times I just work with trying to get everything out as much as possible. Makes it feel a little bit more complete, even though we're still in AA, the Valley of the Suck. Um, but this is looking too bad. This is looking very promising. So I like where the direction is going. And of course, too, have overall armor on him. Still needs to be refined, but it's looking looking pretty good. But we got a lot more information on him so the direction could start to be cleaned and refined. Yeah, this is about where we are. So thank you guys so much for popping in and saying hi. Always fun hanging out. Happy New Year's, Christmas, happy holidays, all the good job. So um, yeah, guys, that's it. Any final questions before I bounce? Fuck. Yeah, let's take a look at him real quick. Got this guy. Oh. Right. Cool, guys. All right. That's going to be it for the day. Thank you all very, very much. And I'll catch you next year. And as always, please join the Discord if you are looking for something, someplace cool to hang out, someplace fun. Um, there's always a ton of really cool artists and stuff in there. So it's definitely a good place to uh, meet new people and also to just hang out with like minded artists. And then, as always, see you guys next year. Usually I stream from 10 to noon Pacific Standard Time every Wednesday. So we're going to be doing a lot more fun stuff in 20. And the old. <laughs> no worries. Let me throw that link in there one more. Boom. All right, everybody. I will catch you all next year. Peace.